Hello everyone. So today we are talking about MRCP paces once more and specifically diabetes, which is a huge topic. Um, so we will be covering aspects of it. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Vishal Kumar. I set up the KeenMedic YouTube channel and also KeenMedic.com where you can find my PACES course. So let's get started. So in this video, what we are going to be talking about is some specific aspects, okay? As I said, diabetes is absolutely huge. People spend years training in diabetes and endocrinology. I'm not going to be able to cover everything in this video. I will be covering these things monitoring and management, certain important concepts which are relevant to PACES that a lot of people miss, and certain specific errors and omissions, again, that are commonly found related to MRCP PACES examinations, okay? All right, let's get started. So with the monitoring and management, let's talk about the long-term um, monitoring first okay so you would monitor with something called HbA1c which I'm sure a lot of you would be aware it's glycated hemoglobin and um, the frequency is every three to six months okay and uh, make sure the key thing that you need to uh, remember is the difference in the different units so recently a couple of years ago uh, the usage changed from percentage to millimoles per so you should know what the conversions are if you uh, don't remember all the conversions that's fine just remember key figures like uh, at what level the diagnosis of uh, diabetes is made and what sort of target um, optimal management uh, is trying to achieve in a patient okay um, in the standard patient all right of course this varies from patient to uh, patient to patient because every um, patient is different their requirements are different so their targets would be different but there are certain uh, overall guidelines which you can look up for um, in nice and also diabetes uk all right so that's the HbA1c. Uh, the more acute day-to-day -day management is, of course, the blood glucose, or otherwise uh, a short, in short form known as BM, which, is, which, by the way, is actually a company's name. So if you can uh, afford to not use uh, the term BM, do so, because, um, you know, it is a company name. It's like calling your phone Apple. But it's not Apple, is it? It's an iPhone. It's a certain model, right? So it's it's not the same. It's uh, so try and use blood glucose instead. Of course, you would uh, measure this daily. Patients should be measuring this daily, especially if they're on insulin, okay? And they should be measuring it uh, two, three times a day, uh, sometimes even more. Again, depending on what uh, their control is like, and specifically, you need to look out for hypoglycemic episodes, which can happen overnight uh, and what you can do is that uh, in these patients you should consider um, thinking about doing a, uh, asking them to do a blood glucose just before they go to bed and also considering um, a snack before bed okay so that would prevent a overnight hypoglycemic episode so the snack can be something like uh, digestives or a banana something like that okay so digestives are biscuits by the way for those of you who don't know uh, and are not in the UK all right in terms of type 1 diabetes the management of course is insulin and there are many, many different ways of managing uh, in terms of the regimes, okay? They can range from basal, basal bolus all the way to pumps, okay? Again, this, this depends entirely on their uh, control, their lifestyle, their requirements. It is all individualized. In some cases, they may just need the basal bolus and they are completely fine for many years and years and years. And they have, you know, HbA1c is perfect. In some cases, they are so bad that, you know, they will have all the complications of diabetes, micro and macrovascular, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so it just depends entirely on them, okay, what the situation is. 
Type 2 diabetes, of course, has got many more management options. The first and foremost is metformin, which a lot of you will be familiar with. Um, this is the first line therapy as of now. And uh, you should be aware, of course, of all the common side effects, the indications, the interactions, whether or not renal function is uh, an issue or not. All these kind of things you should be aware of uh, when it comes to the management of type 2 uh, diabetes and the medications, the oral hypoglycemic agents. Okay, There are many which we'll touch on today. The next most commonly used are sulfonylureas or glycoside, which is the most commonly used one. I have uh, put this in italics mainly because it can cause hypoglycemia, of course, like insulin as well, but this is the most commonly um, used oral agent that can cause hypoglycemia, which you should be aware of. The next ones are DPP4 inhibitors or gliptins like linagliptin and citagliptin. After that are glitazones like pioglitazones. Okay. After that are SGL2 inhibitors, which are um, gliflozins. What a name, right? So these are uh, dapagliflozin or ampagliflozin, which are newer agents. And now uh, you are going to see them increasingly uh, used in the UK environment. Okay, So you should be aware of these as well. Uh, the great thing about these is uh, that they can lower cardiovascular risk and they can cause loss of uh, fluid, which can be good for patients with heart failure, okay? But you can't use them under a certain renal threshold, so you, you need to monitor what their EGFR is uh, before you start them on uh, the SGL2 inhibitors, okay? And lastly, insulin, of course. So insulin will feature in type 1 and type 2 diabetes. A lot of patients, depending on what their uh, tolerance is like, what their renal function is like, what their side effect profile is like, may just be on one oral hypoglycemic agent or maybe two and straight on insulin, okay? Uh, because they just can't have the rest, okay? So if you want me to make another video specifically on type 2 diabetes, uh, agents the management agents let me know in the comments below okay if i've if i've got enough responses for this specific thing we'll go for it and do that all right so certain important concepts to think about hypos are potentially much more serious than higher blood glucose okay so Especially, you know, you will be uh, encountering patients with multiple comorbidities, with poor oral intake, or just generally who are frail um, and their blood glucose will just generally be lower. So in those patients, you should not be too aggressive in the management and instead accept higher blood glucose rather than lower, okay? You shouldn't be too aggressive with the management. Otherwise, what will happen is that they might have recurrent hypoglycemic episodes and some of them might be so severe that they are completely unconscious or worse, go into a coma or cardiac arrest, okay? So that can happen. So hypoglycemic episodes can be extremely dangerous so that's something that you should bear in mind the important concept of hypoglycemic awareness is something you should learn about uh, i'm going to briefly touch on it here but you should definitely go away and read more about it so it's the idea that you know if a blood glucose is falling in a patient then whether or not they are getting symptoms from it if they are not getting symptoms from it, then that is a bad sign. That is a red flag, okay? Then that means that they could suddenly and easily go into a state where they collapse and go into a coma or have an arrest. If, on the other hand, they have got good hypoglycemia awareness, then what can happen is that uh, below a certain threshold of uh, blood glucose, now this will vary from patient to patient, uh, but it's usually generally under the level of four, then what happens is that they will have certain symptoms like sweating and feeling uh, shaky, okay? So uh, these kind of symptoms of hypoglycemia awareness can kick in. And what this means is that they can act on it and they can reverse it, okay? Um, especially, of course, if they are compass mentors, if they are uh, competent individuals, then they can act on it and prevent the hypo becoming any worse. Whereas if you don't have these symptoms, 
that can be dangerous. There is no opportunity to reverse. Okay, so that's what it is. But go away and read more about it because you need to understand this more. All right, so mix, missed insulin doses are also bad news. Now, this is the opposite of hypo, of course, right? So what will missed insulin do? It, it will increase the blood glucose. So there is the risk of having diabetic ketoacidosis, otherwise known as DKA, okay? So this um, would, of course, happen in patients with type 1 diabetes, but DKA can also um, happen in type 2 diabetes. These cases have been seen and they do happen. So basically, uh, what you need to do is check their compliance and see what factors might be contributing to the missed insulin doses, okay? So you just ask the patients whether they are um, having insulin doses that are uh, getting missed and you need to check their techniques which can be done by the help of the uh, diabetes nurse specialist so you can refer them on to them who can then follow them up in the community as well and also check whether there are any social issues or situations that are preventing them from having their insulin whether that be work family, children, uh, their own disabilities, uh, anything and everything is relevant when it comes to managing their uh, diabetes and uh, blood sugar control, okay? These might be hidden agendas in your stations, so you need to explore uh, and ask questions like, is there anything that stops you from having your insulin? Is there any concern that you have that, that might be causing uh, you to miss your insulin? Is there any way we, uh, you can improve in terms of your life that might allow you to have your insulin more regularly? So things like that, questions like that, okay? So lastly, I want to touch on some common errors and omissions. So we need to remember that diabetes is a systemic condition, okay? So diabetes is an endocrine condition, and just like all endocrine conditions, the effects are widespread and we will now talk about the micro and macrovascular complications which you will be aware of but there are certain aspects of it that I want to touch on because they can be missed and uh, it, can, it can be difficult to be put together in the PACES situation okay so commonly macrovascular co complications are done very well so macrovascular complications like stroke and uh, cardiovascular disease and uh, peripheral vascular disease are touched on and checked in the exam uh, well these are done well okay um, most of us don't forget that diabetes can cause stroke and heart disease however it's the microvascular side that is done rather poorly so things like checking whether they have been to the eye clinic okay so diabetic retinopathy can happen and uh, they should be having eye, cl eye clinic checkups every year and similarly the foot clinic so diabetic uh, neuropathy can happen and they can have uh, peripheral neuropathy and they should be having foot clinic checks if not, as you know, Charcot's joint can happen, and that is a nasty thing to happen. And uh, you know, this can lead to all sort of uh, all sorts of issues. And a neuropathy, which is of course a generalized condition, uh, and this can be in the form of uh, peripheral neuropathy, which uh, will give glove and stocking distribution of uh, sensory loss, and autonomic neuropathy, where they can have postural hypotension gastroparesis, etc., all of which um, are unfortunately irreversible and can have lasting, long-lasting effects, okay? And in other uh, patients, uh, patients who are men, uh, if they have got poorly controlled diabetes for a long period of time uh, and their HbA1c is high, they may be having erectile dysfunction, which was also very relevant because that will have effects on their mood, their sexual function, family, and that might then have a knock-on effects with their own diabetes control, and that can be a vicious cycle, okay? So this is also something you should be aware of. All of these things are things you should be checking with the patient if you are faced with the diabetes scenario, all right? So the last thing I want to talk about is taking the holistic approach okay remember that they are a person and like any other person they have got a life so as part of their lives they're going to be doing certain things 
The first thing is that they might have jobs. So diabetes can have lasting implications, uh, both in the acute and chronic uh, stages on their jobs on their abilities okay so first of all you need to think about whether um, they are driving large lorries and trucks HG, hgv drivers so these guys uh, you need to be very careful about asking about hypoglycemic episodes because they are driving large vehicles on the roads and if they're having hypoglycemic episodes and uh, they are not reversing or they are having them frequently but are reversing then their control is poor and you need to get on it okay the other people you need to be careful about are heavy machinery users so these uh, these people might be working in the factory environment in manufacturing for example or builders so again similarly the idea is the same you need to ask specifically about hypoglycemic episodes and their control. Okay, look look out for their uh, blood glucose diary, whether they've got one. If they don't have one, that is in fact a red flag. They should be having one, things like that. Okay. All right. So in terms of driving, uh, similarly, it ties into the HGV driver um, idea. So you need to ask them whether they have informed the DVLA if they are having uh, any poor control okay the DVLA need to be aware and in terms of latest guidelines you should just look it up on uh, the DVLA UK website because the guidelines do change um, from time to time and before your exams you should be aware of the overall guidelines in terms of the patient education, it is a vital concept and this is frequently missed. So as doctors, okay, so as candidates in PACES, you will touch on the various aspects, the clinical aspects like monitoring and management, but you might forget a very key area, which is patient education. And it does come under the umbrella of patient management, okay? Because if you don't educate them, the issues are going to be recurrent and you are not going to achieve the uh, optimal control that the patient needs, all right? So in terms of the education, there are programs and in the UK, you have got something called Daphne for type one diabetes and Desmond for type two diabetes. Uh, and they can go to these programs and these are run uh, by the NHS, um, along with organizations and uh, there they are taught about how to manage their diabetes and how uh, they can adjust things depending on what they are doing okay so this is key all right guys i hope that you found this very useful if you want to learn more uh, about key strategies and paces do check out my book which is now available on amazon and the link will be in the description below and so will my course which is paces course online with all its features okay I'll see you in the next video.